And we're back in the room once again, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to The Cayman Show. Joining me today, she is an actress, a producer, a comedian, a world traveler, a writer, a musician, a YouTuber, a podcaster. Literally, she's all over the place, like what I did there. Give it up for Katie Chonakas, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. How are you? Hi, thank you so much for having me. I'm so grateful to be here. And for the viewer and the listener, thank you so much for tuning in. And I'm excited to add value and inspire you. And I'm, in, I'm excited for an exciting show, Cayman. Thank you. Fantastic stuff. Excellent. Well, it's great to have you. Uh, where are you coming to us from today? I'm in America right now. Um, I'm bi-coastal, LA and New York. I'm visiting my family in Detroit right now in my childhood home. So Excellent. I'm here for another week or two, and then I'll be uh, driving to the Hamptons to be by the ocean. I need oh, to put fantastic. my toes in the sand. Yeah. Brilliant stuff. Yeah, I made it to the coast the other day. The, the, <gasps> the missus and I stayed in a nice hotel in a place called Tembi. Uh, mm. bucketing down with rain, few too many wines the night before. I was like, right, I'm going in the sea. She's like, it's raining. I'm like, well, I'm going to get wet anyway. That's the best place to be, you know? So in I yeah. went. Oh, it was beautiful. Best hangover cure ever. I'm telling yes. you, it's great. It totally is. It's so good to be by the um, the ocean. It's, the healing properties are so amazing. It's like a fish being out of water will die. Our body, we need to replenish our minerals. So we, need, we need to be in the water. Absolutely. And I'm like one of these one of these dogs. I see water, whether it's a river, the sea, a lake, a dirty stinking fish pond in someone's garden. <laughs> I'm in it, you know, <laughs> straight in there. But so how have things been over there? Obviously, we've had some testing times over the last year and a half. How's lockdown been for yourself? Have you used it to your advantage or? You know, aside from all the um, unfortunate circumstances and all the, you know, traumatic things that have happened, honestly, it's been, I think, the best thing that could have happened to all of us. We've been able to really shift our dynamics and pe some people have freaked out getting to know themselves. Some people have been running and a part of other people's dreams and corp and corporate, but it's been able to dismantle and like lose your identity of like, who, who am I in a self-discovery? And so that's going to bring a lot of uproar and turmoil because it's what we've been taught not to do. We've been taught not to tune in with our feelings. We've been told to not speak our mind. We've been told to go with government policies, workplace policies, social policies of what friends are supposed to say and not mm -hmm. say. So I think it really shut down the insecurities of like, I don't align and vibe with these people. I'm not going to spend my energy keeping up with these people who aren't serving me. Me particularly, I was able to, because for the last two decades, I've been all over the place for work and my personal travels of seeing and seeking the world and getting on planes and meeting people with culture and having all that wonderful experience and being so extroverted, it's given me a time to be so introverted as an ambervert. So the definition of an ambervert is an extrovert and introvert. So this whole entire time, I've been literally, I haven't been on a plane in a month and a half, <laughs> and I've been able to be in one place and not only be socially responsible for elders and other people, but to protect myself and the family and the people I care about and to do my part because it really starts with us doing our part, which is going to affect the whole. So I've been able to quadruple down into my podcast. You know, we had X amount of listeners. Now we have over 4,000 per month and only oh, growing wow. on, on she's all over the place. So that's really grew my brand because as an actor, as a voiceover actor, as a voiceover actor, I get auditions you know, today. And they're like, oh, it's an anime. It's from this movie. It's this kind of cartoon. It's this kind of tone, or it's a, it's a celebrity prototype like this. I get a lot of Scarlett Johansson, Emma Stone, Demi Moore, like Alicia Silverstone from Clueless with my vocal quality. And then, or sometimes not often, but sometimes they'll send a podcast. Oh, we want we want the cadence and the vibe and the casual tone of this podcast. And I'm like, Oh, well, I wanted to start my podcast eight years ago and let me build my po podcast. So then the ad agencies, the clients and the people can hear my podcast and go to my voiceover agency and call me for the role. Mm. One, that's one. Also, 
understanding ethics and morals and values and exploring what they mean to me and us as a society and how can we live our driven purposeful lives with the integrity of not selling our dreams because we're so desperate of the egoic mind of the illusion of what we want to happen of Oprah, Britney Spears, or like anyone we may identify with as quote unquote successful, but what they did in the seventies or sixties or eighties and nineties, it's what they did. And that's the evolution of consciousness of where we were. So everything's pivoting and shifting, pivoting and shifting. So through podcasting, we can change, exchange the evolution and the language to be what is now to um, transmute and to pivot, to be here now really, and create the unknown from a white canvas. So also, lastly, on the topic of podcasting and building my brand, how can someone who's a union actor like me do something like improv or do something like a podcast where it's I'm showing who I am, my, like I said, ethics, morals, and values. I'm a mental health advocate. I'm an advocate for CPS, Child Protective Services, awesome. to understand that it's, um, you know, they're underpaid and the children are, are poor children, helpless children, and they're, no one wants to take the children out of the home unless there's some physical abuse of their cracked head being open with blood gushing out. But now we're in the times of empathy and mental health and hope and faith and the, the abuse of what's happening through language that a CPS person can't see in the home and the kids are conditioned to not speak. The kids are petrified and terrified and they're but eight years old and some can't speak and some are 12 and they think they're going to go get locked up and taken mm. away and they're so scared. So they don't really position the system to really allow kids to be able to, you know, share and get out of a horrible situation. And then those kids turn into adults. So once the mentality of humans is, oh, poor children, poor children, but then they become young adults like you and I. And then what, what do adults do? They point fingers. Oh, look what that person's doing. Look what they're doing. Yeah, they're making these choices because they never had a chance as children. Now they're adults with still childlike energy from the source from the universe, but now they're being blamed and shamed, but they never had an opportunity. So I'm real. I don't have children yet, but I am a big advocate for this. So through the podcast and through sharing of who I am and adding value to other people as a collective, then directors and producers and people in my union can see who I am. And Hey, we want her to be an actor in this project because these are what she stands for. And this is who she is. And so then that's how it can go hand in hand with the podcast and speaking my voice, you know, and having the, um, in social media now having your own independent platform and really growing that you don't need to go to Hollywood anymore. They come to you. They mm -hmm. find you their job. They have interns and they have people and they're seeing on the pulse of like what popular culture is like and where evolution is going. Lastly, I'll say that's why there's all these shows coming out on Netflix and Hulu. And it's like all these shows that are coming out like woke and stuff. And it's like, because they're talking about what the people want to talk about. Mm. That's it. Look at it, going back to podcasting. I never sat in front of a podcast and microphone before the lockdown. So, you know, for myself included lockdown, that's one positive for me to come out of it all as well. It was like, right, I'm bored. I'm stuck in four walls. I've got creative juices flowing. I don't know what the hell to do with them. I need to talk to people. I'm stuck here on my own. You know, let's buy a microphone and podcast, you know? So here we are. Uh, like, what, what are we now? I think we're 57 shows later now. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's all good. There's, there's something positive to come out of something negative. Like you say, it's the way forward podcasting. You're putting all your positive energy into what, what you want to do, what you want to talk about, what you want to broadcast. And if people like it, great, pick up on it, get involved and just network. It's fantastic. Yeah. And the other thing is, I love your mic and your setup, by the way. And the other thing is you just went for it. We start messy and we go for it. And that's the most important thing. We got past ourselves and we wanted to put ourselves out there and share what was going on from within. And by doing that, it really connects us as humans because we all need to purge and we need to get these ideas and we need to get these things out, whether they're positive, ugly, whatever. We need to get these things out. So like if there's a monster growing inside and I've been isolated with this thing that happened to me 10 years ago mm -hmm. and it's been festering and I've been so insecure and I don't know who to share and I don't know how to tell about 
about it and I don't want and people like Simone and Britney Spears and they're letting out these dysfunctions and these silent abusers and these people who are in their circumstances it's like that's why people are like Rawr, wanting to speak out because it's happened to them and so this is a safe space to allow those things to come out and people to connect and vibe and share with their communities and share and say hey I identify with this this is mine. And then they feel validated. Be like, let me tell my story too. Or maybe they're insecure. They don't want their story to be heard, but they feel heard by hearing someone else. So it's very therapeutic. This is a time of healing. And that's why when I uh, released my first e um, solo EP, Hypnotic Energy Under the Sophisticated Psychos, which is streaming everywhere and you can get it for free on SoundCloud and our videos on the Sophisticated Psychos YouTube, um, we work with scientists at Subtle Energy and they're into quantum physics, which you can't see, but it's an energy. Mm. It's a vibration of sound healing and what we're sharing. And he sent me all these sophageal healing frequencies. And I looked at them all and it was a kid in a candy store. And I'm like, oh, I'm like 639 healing frequencies, 639 um, healing frequencies, foster forgiveness within self, our relationships with one another. And we start with forgiveness. And my vessel was in a deep, deep state of forgiveness. And I felt like on a planetary level, October 20th, 2020, I'm a numbers girl. I aligned and I let out this forgiveness EP. So when people hear the, the hypnotic energy music, whether they're conscious or unconscious to it, it's there's subtle energies, quantum physics that are encoded by scientists. And I just felt like, my vessel like i'm like you know our planet we need to do a lot more healing and forgiving of one another so that's how i started with myself and that's how i took action for not only myself and the people i care about but for the people i don't know and for the people out there who may need a lot of forgiving and then my vessel after a few months after i explored the 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 feel the forgiving it shifted to remove the sophageo healing frequencies of my next ep called full house it's a house ep and i selected 396 healing frequencies and 396 healing frequencies removes guilt and fear and i was going back to when i was 13 and it was my freshman year in high school and i showed up at the first homecoming game football game and i showed up my parents dropped me off and i was around all my popular girlfriends and there was like a seven of them sitting in a circle where all the you know popular people mm, sit all the cool kids yeah all the cool kids. And this one girl, she just glared at me. She glared at me. And all the girls in that moment, they all took her side. They didn't have any compassion. What happened? What's wrong? What's your take on it? Blah, blah, blah. They blamed me. They shamed me. And in that moment, being 13, I took on the blame. I took on the shame. Being an independent female warrior, Greek, Grecian goddess, I put this armor up and I took on this shame and I took on this blame. And I carried it and I went, I went a couple rows above. And I sat there through the whole entire game all by myself, feeling isolated, numb and frozen and tense inside. And it was so traumatic. And I lived through it because I was too proud. My I was as my heritage, Greek heritage or whatever. I was too proud to leave. Most girls would have maybe left and cried. I, I, I stood there because I know I didn't do anything wrong, mm. but I never had that communicative, you know, bond with girls. So then my journey took me on this, um, process of under understanding divine femininity and exploring the the in, 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 intricacies of the the sentimental value of communication and and respect and honor and and understanding choices and so i that's been a whole journey and that's a whole nother podcast but <laughs> um but now I'm going to go release my uh, third EP and that's encoded with different healing frequencies. So I'm just following the flow of my vessel and my energy and the times and aligning to what's that spark? What, what excites me? What's that thing that's exciting? That's exciting for me. And if, if I'm getting a ripple effect of excitement, I want to bring that joy to other people. Definitely. Fantastic. Oh, why not? Share the love sort of thing, you know? Yeah. So so these, these healing frequencies you talk about, then can they be heard physically and picked out from these EP? They're silent. They're they silent. Yeah? However, you know, when you go swimming, you're like, ah, and you have that Christmas. Or if you go somewhere and you see something, you're like, ah, and your neurotransmitters are yeah. blowing and you feel <laughs> so excited. So be, we're very 
um, you know, a lot of people in Vipassana, the 10 day silent meditation, they say we're grass. We're so numb. We're so numb and the energy is so dense. We're so frozen and numb that we, we don't feel. So it, un, it makes, it makes you unstuck. However, if you're an empath, if you're sensitive, if you're, if you're aware, if you take a nice bath, you know, your senses are open, you're relaxing. And then you listen and you go on a journey, you could feel the subtle energies you mm. can. And so whether you're conscious of it or not, you can listen to it while you're working out or cleaning the house or doing your homework in the background or dancing to it. Like you feel a shift in vibration of the energy. You might not feel it at first, depending on how much trauma you have to unpack, depending how much stuff, because we've all been very domesticated and we're primal beings. But once we get out of our head, and that's why I love EDM music, because it's not like a traditional song you hear on the radio where it's like verse, chorus, mm. bridge, you know, this and, and the radios attune the frequencies, there's governed laws, and we are attuned of how we can hear music, like even podcasting, like with Apple, it has to be attuned to a certain frequency. And that's the govern law of how they want us to hear mm. um, the vibrations that go in. So I love EDM music because it's like, you never know when there's going to be a drop. Like Skrillex <laughs> is so important because it's like your bad boy bill. It's like, ah, you're screaming. It's like, ah, because it, it's, a, <laughs> it's a shift. And it's an unconscious thing that's being released into the body. And it's like, when it's released, you have this energy and it's like, ah, and it's all this <laughs> exciting energy. I mean, that's why people love going to festivals and concerts and being around these, these energetic people who are all feeling these new energies, right? Definitely. And so that's where they get their release then, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. And that's quantum physics. And, and, you know, people can read more about quantum physics and si it's a science, you know, and there's healing properties. And it's, again, something you do not see, but it's something, you know, that you, you feel right. And yeah, I think it's, it's a miraculous time we're living in mm. and for the artists and the people who are open to exploration and science and quantum physics, can understand it and the people who have been taught so many things and we've been domesticated to not to know to play small and to look at things more of a peanut um point of view um those are the ones who are judging it you know who are comparing it in comparison to the death threat and when we're judging we're only really judging ourselves and mm -hmm. we're judging the things that we don't know, we're upset about that because we're not connected to that. But there's a shift in energy to, instead of judging it, to be curious about it. Oh, I don't think this could be. Okay, fine. You don't think this could be, but instead of putting your righteous ego fork in the ground of, I don't think this could be, why don't we have a new conversation of what are the possibilities here? What are the other people saying? Some people I know, they have such blinders on because they just watch like the news all the time mm -hmm. and they're just, they're just in their own bubbles. I'm like, uh, you need to be exposed to all these other things people are saying. Like there's a lot of things happening in the world. Like we're not in the nineties or eighties or even seventies anymore. Mm -hmm. Like we're in the 21st century and our world, this is one of the greatest, the artists I talk to, the people I, I talk to, they say it's revolutionary and it's one of the most exciting times we can be alive. And I'm really happy to be here. I'm definitely happy to be here, especially in the fate of the, the year and a half that we've had. And, uh, you know, so I've had, uh, I'm blessed still to be here. You know, I've, uh, I've had my dabble with COVID and everything as well. And, uh, it's, you know, onwards and upwards. But yeah, I think society boxes us a lot of the time and sticks labels on us and says to us, this is your path. You take this one, this one, or this one, and there are no other paths. Like, you know, I know it was like that when I was schooled and everything. It's like, right, you're going to do this, you're going to do that, you're going to do that. Uh, I was like, right, I, but I want to be a wrestler. Do you know what I mean? And uh, it was like, you're never going to be a wrestler. I was like, but that's all I want to do. I want to be a wrestler or I want to be an actor. It was like, all right, well, try this. Try engineering or something. So I did a city and guilds in engineering. I passed that, but I never did anything with it. And I did become a pro wrestler. And I'm making a comeback match on the 28th of August for Pro Wrestling Carnage as well. So, uh, yeah, that's, you know, that points to what you're saying, I think. It's just go, go for what's in here rather than what people are trying to shove in there or shove in there, you know? It's, uh, yeah. 
So to, a couple of things, congratulations on that. Con that's so great. Um, there's a couple different things. When you're a kid, you don't know because you're exploring, you're telling people. But what's really important, you know, if you're listening and tuning into this is uh, one thing is my metaphor of it is like this. So I didn't find out till later on that a lot of women, when they're trying to get pregnant, a lot, it's just very common to have miscarriages, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why I didn't know this, but that's why a lot of people, they don't tell the family, they don't tell people until the, after the first trimester. So because in the first three months, it can dissipate and it can, you can miscarry. So I think it's with your wrestling, with it, whatever the person wants to do, and, and this applies to any principle of life, anything at all. When I want to do something, I've had to learn because I love talking and I love sharing mm -hmm. and I love caring and I want to be excited. Like, oh my God, chocolate cake. Here, have some <laughs> chocolate cake. But no, you have to like really enjoy the chocolate cake for yourself and really experience it because it was gifted to you and then share the chocolate cake. So in the analogy of what I'm sharing is when, when someone wants to do something like a podcast or whatever, write a book or, you know, even, even a personal thing with someone, I have some clients because I do industry coaching, you know, for clients. And I have clients who are like, you know, 56 years old and they don't tell their family or anyone because the, what you need to do is when you tell someone your exciting idea, you put it out into the world and it dissipates like you've already done it. The brain doesn't know. So you're putting it out there like it's already done. And then all these people are bah, 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 giving your opinions that you don't want to hear. And they're they're putting muck in different colors on your mm. canvas instead of you giving yourself a full opportunity to birth it, to birth the ideas, to have a white canvas, to build it like an oak tree, to have this, this energy. Because you're still, while you're having these ideas, you're channeling and researching of all these things that you can connect to these people you can connect to things because you're really developing it in the first three months. So in the first trimester, you know, of what you're creating, like, don't, maybe don't tell anyone, keep all that chi. It's called chi, that energy, mm. let that life force build within you journal about it, fantasize about it, but keep that sacred bond between you and yourself. So then when you're an oak tree, and you're doing a show, then you're, then you send them the flyer. Oh, they're like, I didn't even know you were doing wrestling. <laughs> then, you, then they're on the Facebook. Oh, I didn't even know you were doing it, but you've already done it and you've already aligned. So then no one can drag you down from your ideas or try to get in the way because you're so solid within and without that. It doesn't matter what other people say because you're doing it your way. And the universe knows because you have, you, you're protecting your energy and your thoughts and you're showing the universe how serious and passionate you are and you're not allowing outside receptors to come inside. That's it. I think that's a lot of the reason as well why a lot of people aren't successful in their dreams and whatnot because they let what other people say. And it's not always other people trying to, to, to be nasty or anything like that, you know, or, or trying to be, be horrible about it. Sometimes they think they know better, particularly in my experience then, uh, you know, I love my parents a bit, don't get me wrong, but we're very different people and we have very different lifestyles. Uh, they are more academic. They are more, right, pick a career. You know, when you're young, follow that career path, do it. I wasn't academic at all, right? I was rubbish in school, absolutely rubbish. I was bored and my mind kept wandering off to the places where my mind wanted to be and where my heart wanted to be. Uh, it was in a wrestling ring. It was on a rock stage. Um, so places like that. I was riding a Harley, things like that. Now I am a wrestler. I'm in a band and I've got a Harley Davidson fat boy. So, you know, I was right. I think in my head, you knew. You yeah, knew. I knew, you where, knew where I was destined to be. And you knew. There, was, there were teachers and, and parents and things telling me, Oh no, you're not going to do that. You're never going to do that. You're never going to have this. But I think academics is, is yes, yeah, good in one respect, but I think people, if they are into something or looking at something or they've got this focus, this goal or this dream, then they should offer more encouragement for that rather than dismiss it, you know? Well, also it's like what you just said. It's like, okay, I'm aligned, ask some questions. So I'm aligned and in tune. My parents don't understand. They love me, but they don't know. They're teaching you what was taught to them. They yeah. were teaching what was taught from, from your grandparents and it's generational, but we're not in those times anymore. So the, the tools and advice they're giving you, they're outdated. 
they're they're we're in different times now. So then it's like, so then it's like being mindful to save your energy because there's gonna be a there's gonna be a disconnect. You're gonna get frustrated, you're gonna keep getting frustrated, you're gonna be upset because they don't understand your dream, right? That's one. Invite him to the show. Two. Like another thing is like, okay, I'm into wrestling. I'm into, you know, these kind of things. Who's in my community? Who's someone I look up to? I can, now you can follow them on social media. You can read their book. You can see what they're reading. You can see what seminars they're going to. You can, that that's how they're, they're going to feed you and it's going to be reciprocal. So sometimes, you know, it's like, I could be wanting cherry ice cream, but I'm going to a cookie shop. And it's like, I'm not going to get the cherry ice mm -hmm. cream at the cookie shop that's right but, but you keep going to the cookie shop expecting ice cream that's like <laughs> they say it's a definition of insanity but if you want cherry ice cream you have to research and like who has the cherry ice cream oh these three places which has and then i'm gonna go try out all cherry ice creams and i'm gonna like oh this place i like this place because it's coconut cherry ice cream and i prefer coconut cherry instead of um the dairy so it's like same thing with the principle it's like finding out okay i'm into wrestling all right. Well, who? Oh, this guy's my vibe. This this girl's my vibe. These this they don't really have my vibe. The stuff they're talking about, they're too meaty or, you know, they're not comical. They're more serious. But this is more my vibe. So you find your vibe and then you you align with those kind of people. And that can be in any profession, you know, for any entrepreneur, any artist. Definitely. Definitely. That's, that's awesome. It's, it's nice to. uh to speak to like-minded people as well, you know, it's, it, it, it helps a lot and it brings it home. Um, so you're obviously a very busy bee to say the least. All right. <laughs> so I just wanted to know how, where, when, and why, and how old are you, I guess, at the time when you decided, right, the nine to five job just, just wasn't for you. Oh, I, I was never a nine to fiver. I knew it from the beginning. <laughs> I've, I've never, I've never had a nine to five job. Yeah, I just it's just like you said, being young and nine to five and people tell you to do it. Um, I don't think anyone really ever told me to get a nine to five, but um, I was a, a kid. I was 12. And oh, so my my um, I was before 12. I <laughs> I was like eight and um, I got a newspaper route and I went and I collected money, you know, and I delivered the newspaper yeah, twice been a week. There. <laughs> Did, uh, that was my first job. I was an entrepreneur from the get. I, I was, you know, I was raised independent. My parents were 18, 19 having kids. So they had my sister, then they had me and they were kids having kids, very humble beginnings. My um, dad's family immigrated over from Greece. And so, um, you know, I don't want to say we were poor, like we had, you know, but when, when I was first, you know, at first when my mom and dad had my older sister, um, they lived at my Yaya's house and my Papu's house. They, and then they got their own house, you know, so very humble beginnings of, you know, getting them started. And they did work nine to five kind of jobs. And um, I was very in ways, very independent with culture. And so I did the newspaper job and then we moved to our new home and you had to be 14 to um, be a job. And my sister was, and I was 13, but with my persuasive qualities and my charm, I got the guy, <laughs> I got the guy, Charlie, you know, to give me, I was scooping ice creams at 13 and you had to be 14, but I, you know, when there's a no, you find a way, no yeah, matter what. So, good so old I, Charlie, eh? <laughs> yeah, so I made it happen. And then from that point on, I was always independent. I ran cross country and then, you know, I, I was always interested in, I was a poet and then I, you know, was interested in, you know, being an artist and exploring, you know, humans and running cross country and going to school and being involved in like arts and everything and, um, you know, modeling and then doing the auto shows and, um, you know, traveling America, doing the auto show, speaking about the different, you know, vehicles. And I was in front of thousands of people being a narrator, educating people and feeling the, the, the tone and the breed and the energy of like Arizona and Boston and Chicago and LA and New York. And I, I selected the big 10, the big tens, because I, for me, I wanted to go and do auto shows for 10 days in the big cities that were, were very exciting for me. And then I had 20 days left in the month to focus on acting, to research books, to network, to model, to just do that. 
instead of doing like the three to five day shows in the smaller cities. Mm. And that's just how my mind worked. Like I'm a binger, right? I, me, like, I was like, when I was watching Full House growing up, I'm like, what is this every Friday or whatever? You know, it's like, no, I like to sit down as an intense Scorpio and I like to watch the whole entire season right then and there. Yeah, and it's fun because I'm, I'm like relaxing, you know, um, that's a lot of fun. So I've always, I've always been an artist. And then, um, you know, right when I turned 18, it's that invisible line and I I was able to get a credit card. And so I started um, doing write-offs immediately. My dad taught me about that. So I was able to, ever since I was 18, I've just been uh, writing thing, writing expenses off that had to do. And I always treated myself as a young business woman. And I was Mm. very specific of being a human, being an artist, But then also I knew at a young age, I needed to develop the business side of me because I didn't come from a family of doctors and lawyers or, you know, people who were into stocks and investing. Like I knew I had to develop that on my own at a very young age. So I sought out mentors and people, you know, who could share those kind of things with me, you know, and I I learned a lot as an entrepreneur, a lot from men, actually, Um, you know, later on, I sought women, but I initially went to men looking for that stability of business, you know, because I wanted to be taken as a serious businesswoman. So, you know, um, so those are some experiences of, Mm -hmm. you know, growing up and knowing I was going to be an artist. Awesome stuff. Fantastic. So you've talked a bit about the poetry there as well. Can we touch a little more on that? Did you yeah. did you recently release a book? Yes, I have. It. Oh, I have it right Let's here. Let's have a look. Ooh. Let's have a look. Yeah. So it's called A Lover's Fairy Tale. Tell us all about it. <sighs> okay. So um, when I was a kid, I felt like I was, a bur- I was a bird in a cage and I wanted to spread my wings and explore and be a seeker. Growing up Greek Orthodox Christian with Greek mythology and fantasies. I always um, loved Socrates and Plato and Aristotle and language and poetry. So that's how I became a poet. And I traveled the world. Um, literally, I traveled all around the world and I chose to be single and I chose to be celibate because I didn't want to go into the world spreading my legs and exchanging that kind of energy to get what I wanted. Mm. I wanted to go out into the world untainted with my spirit, my soul, being human, what God gave me, not feeling used and abused by anyone or letting anyone have that kind of power over me. Because when you, you know, it's an exchange of energy when you're with someone and because of my own maybe traumatic experiences or me, me being so intense or just the way God wanted it for me, you know, like I'm named after the saint, Saint Kiriaki. She was a martyr and she wasn't into boys and she was into, you know, education and books, reading and learning. So maybe I, her spirit is within me. And so I went around the world untainted by anyone else's thoughts and anyone else's anything. And I was able with my personality and my charm, I was able to travel the world and see and make it happen and have this faith and this knowing um, and this confidence that it was meant to be. And it was an exploration of consciousness. And while I was in all these new places, Dominican Republic, Greece, Monaco, India, um, you know, um, Italy and uh, London and Paris and like all these beautiful places I was writing. I would be on my balcony and I would be writing poetry um, or I would be in Malibu before I'm going on set of like the Pussycat Dolls. I was in their music (laughs) video. Yeah. And I was in their music video and I was early and it was so hot. It was like 110 degrees and I'm in my car and I'm, I'm, I like to get to set early and I'm in my car, but I'm so frustrated that I like picked up a pen and a pencil and I just wrote down these things verbatim. And so these things are moments in these poetry pieces. I selected 11 from, from like 2002 to 2014. I selected these pieces that meant so much to my heart. And then inside, not only it's the language of the, the poetry book of my world travels, which is all about 
whimsical fantasy and it's great for an adult it's great for people our age it's great for children it's a clean book um it's the remembrance of why we're here the exploration of curiosity and play and fun and it's a shift of vibration to touch your soul in a way of how my soul was touched and so not only is it the language of the poetry in the times and the essence of those moments, but my dear friend who's a legendary photographer, Robert Sturman, he said yes, and I was his muse. And we did a series together with uh, the Polaroid, which was discontinued in 2001, the oh, original Polaroid. And so Polaroid sent him all of these, um, like, uh, um films and they had to be put in freezers to preserve or else they would go bad and so during the time of my world travels during the time of my world travels and um um writing the pieces uh they were in the same alignment of these of these photos that look like paintings so oh, wow. yeah that looks like a van gogh to me yeah oh thank you so there's wow. four there's 14 pieces. He'll love to hear that. I'll tell Robert. Awesome, so, yeah. so he has 14 pieces in the book. And then, and so that's the book. And then I have a loversfairytale.com. And if you go to uh, my website, chinakas.com or a loversfairytale.com, and you go to the bottom and you put in your email, I curated an automation and you'll receive a gift for me. And it's a playlist of the spoken word music videos me saying them verbally self-produce self-finance the cameras the lighting the editing the the costume the makeup like the whole team of people who got together to make this happen the location like with my vision mm. and i had artists to get together in los angeles and in new york city to make these come to life and then during the pandemic because some of these i made 10 years ago but during the pandemic I repurposed all of the content that I had and I curated it into a playlist. And I thought, what's one thing that I've always wanted to do that I haven't done yet? And I'm like, I wanted to be an, a published poet. And so with Amazon and with Barnes and Nobles and all the other places you can self-publish, I'm like, I, it was my birthday gift to myself. And I said, by the spring on World Poetry Day, I was going to release my first poetry book. And so I did. <laughs> that's amazing. Brilliant stuff. Fantastic. Well, congratulations on that. That's, that's awesome. Awesome accomplishment. Brilliant. Thank um, you. Did you, uh, so you don't have to, do you want to share a bit with us now or not? You want me to read you a piece? Yeah, go. If you're happy to. Great, great. Let me select a piece for you. Fantastic. And we'll drop those links in the um, video and audio descriptions as well, all right? So people can uh, just click on them and go straight. Yeah. Hmm. Mm. Here we go. Maybe I'll read this piece. It's called uh, Bermuda. Into the distance. I have been seeing and seeking the world. So I have not been by a computer that much. Currently, I am in Milano, Italy. So wonderful here. May there be details about this trip later. However, at this point, I must rewind and take you back to my end of June trip to Bermuda. Please enjoy. Bermuda. Today's a new day. A start to a new life an improved life, an improved heart. Open myself, give. Open myself, love. A breakthrough, a new you. I come to you with her some play. I think of you, lust, love, lay. A new beginning, an end that will never be too near. A secret that will never be too fierce. With her some, I cannot take your sorrow. Lather some, and always calling tomorrow. Read, wither me not. The story's about to get super hot. In a world that we know, in a land that we reap, seek me not. Your pleasure is much too deep. Wrap me not. The honey on my soft sheets. It's a lovely way, a land so clear, small but vivacious. 
step into the wrong plate, you may end up solo on your own very date, the triangle, as we best know. The loneliness show up missing. Yeah, they just disappear. Armageddon to the unknown. They will eat you up like you didn't even know. Gunshots, bangs, murders, we never see. It happens, but they clean it up so quickly. Never say a word, yo, it's not my place. I didn't sting the bird. A brother's a brother, and yo, I got your back. For a place we do not know. Stay into the light, for in the darkness, you may never be found. It's been real, oh, so very real. It's been sweet, oh, so very sweet. Such chaos. You think it's so peaceful. Step into the wrong places, a feeling of regret, a feeling of discerned desire, a way of being, talking, crying, acting with some girls on the forefront, a sickness, a pleasure. I don't know of this thing called pleasure. I don't know of this thing called love, but I know I'll find it. I'll cherish it. Hopefully now, so it's not too late. I wake up and I've lost my own very date of time. Why am I causing myself so much crime? I can't see you. I can only hear you. I can't touch you. I can only feel you. On the way back from Bermuda, a friend said to me, it's nice to be important, but it's more important to be nice. Then I got a text from a girlfriend and it read, in the end, it's not the years in your life, but the life in your years. So I travel and I wish to explore see and feel as much as possible. One is so blessed to be doing what they wish, what they desire. My words to you, follow your heart, always. That was awesome. That was fantastic. Thank you. This, this, this is the image that goes with it. Oh, wow. Brilliant, amazing. Great stuff. A lot to be taken from that as well. It's nice to be important, but important to be nice. There's a big message there as well, I think. And that's, that's great. And you, I, for a lot of that, I, I closed my eyes then all right, for a lot of that. It's just, wow, you, you read it so well as well. Fantastic. That was great. Little Thank goose you. pimply then, little goose pimply. Yeah. You know? but, uh, yeah. yeah. No, that was great. Fantastic. Yeah. Excellent. If you break it, thank you. And if you break it down and you go through it, it's just, in the moment when I was writing it in like 2007, six, 2006 and seven, yeah. and what it is then and what it is now, it's like, why am I causing myself so much crime? Like we do it to ourselves. Mm. Like we, we make the choices and we do it to ourselves, you know? And it's like the honey on my soft sheets. It's, it's a lovely way just embracing waking up in the morning in your own sheets like the comfort of a bed is such a privilege like Absolutely. the comfort of that waking up when it's cozy cozy and just embracing those moments and those subtle moments of appreciation that we just take for granted a lot of times you know totally are we all yeah. guilty of that everyone is guilty of that as well you know it's, it's there's other people in the world who aren't as privileged you know who don't wake up in a bed even you know i know i know yeah and then also like, you know, in the, the metaphors of, you know, you go to places and things happen and people don't say anything because you're a tourist and mm. things happen and they clean it up. Oh, so quickly. It's like, it's huge for people to go to Bermuda and, um, and, you know, um, and get married. And while I was there just a couple of days prior, like someone was shot and killed and like they, the, they show up missing all the time, but they keep it from the news, mm, but it happens yeah. there all you, the you time. You don't hear about those things too, you know? Yeah. Those, you know? We, they keep it and they hide it. And then it's like make the quality of choices, the places you go and the things you do. So you don't like show up on the wrong plate. So you don't show up and mm. you know what I mean? To protect yourself, to be in tune with your intuitions, like you were saying earlier, you mm. know? Definitely. That's awesome. Fantastic. Yeah. Where, where can people pick that book up from? Uh, a lover's fairy uh, Amazon and it's on Barnes and Nobles. So yeah, everyone can pick it up there. Brilliant. Off you go then guys, treat yourselves, treat yourselves. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so very busy. So, so we've covered poetry as well. Uh, can we talk a little bit about your acting career? Uh, yeah, I'd love to. How and where did you break into acting and what, what was your first, what was your first screen role? 
Yeah, I would say it was with uh, Gary Sinise from CSI New York. I was going to say yeah, CSI, yeah, fantastic. And it was so apropos because the scenario is a circus act that traveled around and I play a 15 year old um, Hispanic girl. And I, it was, it was a story in the circus of Romeo and Juliet and I'm a poet. So mm. I, I play Juliet and it was magnificent. And Gary Sinise gave me one of the best compliments of my whole entire life. Cause we're working like this for a week, like, you know, real close to one another. And he said to me, he said, cause he's, you know, did Forrest Gump. He's done so many yeah, things. Yeah. He oh, he's me, awesome actor. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and he said, you're a very soulful actor. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. Grab that one and frame it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Totally. That's awesome. Hell of a compliment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, I've gone off to do so many other roles. People can see my uh, IMDb, iMovie database, my reel on my website, chinakas.com, and see some of the movies I've been in and TV shows. And um, and then uh, now, and then I, I um, I'm doing voiceovers. I do a lot of voiceovers. I took a break from on-screen acting because I was self-producing. It was the time of like, oh, all the technology. So actors, producers, everyone's encouraging, make your own short films, make your own web series. So we're in, um, we're in competition of over 25 film festivals right now internationally. Wow. I won best, yeah, I won best director for four so far. Oh, well um, done. Thank you. We're uh, over, over over 25 uh, official selections. We've won about uh, 15, 12 to 15 uh, winners so far. And um, we're, we had about over 900 invites and it's still going, which I'm really excited about. Mm -hmm. Um, but then after doing all of that, I'm like, okay, during the pandemic was giving me a great time to uh, rebrand and get like a whole new team. So I got a manager and I got, I got an agent in New Mexico. It's booming there. And so I'm represented in all the markets, LA, New York, New Mexico, Atlanta, and then I have a manager. And so like today I'm going out for a limited series, uh, straight to network, um, and then just a couple of days ago, I, I went out for another limited series, uh, straight to it's straight to series got picked up. I'm up for this other movie right now. So uh, you're going to be having me back out when I'm like, yo, I'm doing a movie with so-and-so right now. Or I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm, come on. I'm on Always I'm welcome. On set. Yeah. <laughs> but so so now the, the number one goal is um, to become a household name, to be consistent, to go all the way. Because I've dabbled and I've been successful in so many of these areas with music and things that I've done. So now that I'm like this young person who has really explored all facets of entertainment and of the world and understanding people because I was having a halt with my acting honestly like Misha Barton was the OC and then this girl Olivia she got the role of her lesbian lover she was the bartender but like it was between me and her and mm. they chose her because she looked older than me although I was older than her and then yeah. I I was up for Gossip Girl and the um, Jeff Greenberg, the casting director, amazing casting director. He was like, this is going straight to series. It's going to go on for a long time. Gossip Girl. We don't know if you're going to age well. So like, um, you know, they booked Leighton Meester. I didn't get the role, but it's like Hollywood, things like that happen, but also with acting. So it's sometimes a look. You know, with with film, it's different. With TV, they have to match the mom with the daughter and the, the family. You know, yeah, yeah. But sometimes it's not the best actor who gets the role, even though it should be the best actor who gets the role. Especially with the world that we're living in now, that we all can don't have to look like a perfect family. More mm. diversity. So hopefully Hollywood is broken out of that old mold. But I was stigmatized, I feel, by that um, because of my look looking too young um, or blah, blah, blah. So the other thing is um, now the thing about acting is this, like what we're doing, like one person's talking and the other person's listening. But a lot of times when people actors show up at Warner Brothers or Paramount to do an audition and a lot, a lot of times now it's self tape, which is awesome for people who have social anxiety mm -hmm. and it saves so much time. And you, I think you get more quality work done by actually having it on a video, but that's my own personal opinion. And then you can do a call back with the director on zoom or whatever or in person, but, but doing the self tape, you can do as many takes as you want and you can actually prepare and be like, Oh, this is my best tape. Here you go. Cause when you're going into the room, you're preparing for uh, 24 hours to a week and you go in, you're there for five minutes or less. Mm. And they're like, thank you. And then, and then you leave and you're like, but that wasn't my best read or I want to do it again. Or like maybe something happened because we're human, you know? Mm. So, so now since I, since um, a lot of times, like I was saying with acting, a lot of people are, 
talking, but then when they're stopped, they're so worried about their next line. They're so worried that they become a deer in headlights. It's like blank. It's like nothing's there and you're not listening. So I, I, in 2016, I took a DJ music program because I love DJing. I love music. And I wanted to understand all facets of DJing and what it mean, meant to be a DJ and what kind of DJ I am particularly. So the cool thing about that was I didn't have to go to acting classes, which I've already studied with a lot of the best people in LA, in New York. I went to Landa. I went to the London Academy of Music and Dramatic Arts. All right. Studied, okay. Yeah, I studied Shakespeare. Um, love Hadmer Smith. I, that's where I stayed. I love it. And, um, and I was able to go and not memorize um, 12 pages or 24 pages or read hundreds of pages in a script, I could just show up and listen. I could show up and listen for one year because I love being committed and I was listening and I was attuning my ear to become a better listener, which mm. made me a better person in life to understand people and what they were saying and what they weren't saying and how they were saying in the tone of how they were saying it, which is so sentimental and important. And then I thought that would make me a better actor too on the other side of it of being a better listener and that would give me more experience to kind of age and grow in a bit so I would not grow out of that you know stigmatized place of where I felt I was stuck mm. so now I took that break and now it's like boom here I am empowered full circle and like my number one target because of who I am and what I've experienced God willing, I'm my next steps are having a family producing children and I can be anywhere in the world and my child can be with me and I can, you know, be on screen acting and then also doing voiceovers. You can be anywhere in the world, literally even on, anywhere in the world. Yeah, literally, literally, because this is how it's all done now through the programs. And I can be on a set when you're on set for 16 hours, 14 hours, you're in your trailer. There's so much downtime. Mm. I could be doing podcasting. I can be doing like, I want to be a lead on a voice over animation series. This is my goal. Oh, and fun. I can be raising a family and babies and then doing fun. Like you doing wrestling and me doing all these wacky voices <laughs> that are so fun for me in the comfortability of my own home. Perfect. That's what it's all about. Great stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. You've, you've done, you know, you've been relatively successful in acting anyway. You've done a, a lot more than many, right? You've worked with some big names as well. Um, Nicolas Cage, Al Pacino, Robert De Niro, um, to, to name a few. Um, so out of working with all those uh, and any others, who has who's influenced you the most or who has who is best, not just to work with, that you may have met on set perhaps? Yeah, well, you know what? It's funny you bring Nicolas Cage up because I just remembered, like, I woke up, I had a dream about him last night. Like, I'll, <laughs> like, I feel like once you connect with someone, whether you connect with them in the physical realm at all, like, our spirits are connected and it's on screen. So it's legendary and mm. quote unquote for eternity. But I feel like we're really interpersonally connected and I hope to create and work with him again. He was magnificent to work with. He was so impactful to work with and his consciousness of who he is and his body of work and where he comes from and to honoring me and being with me and us like exchanging. And I, you know, brought myself to him and him to me, like as an artist, as, as humans, like whether we're open to it or not, we're affected by one another and our, we, we cross paths, you know, um, same thing with like, um, Robert De Niro and Al Pacino, just to like, you know, be in their presence and be with their body of work. It really kind of puts me in a, in a realm of like, when someone maybe from the outside looks at me and everything I've done, like I said, success is measured. But for me, it's like, oh, I've worked with these people. Now let me go to the South of France or let me work on an <laughs> album. It's not, it wasn't about, oh, let me keep like consistently working. Cause I feel like everything's like a stove and a garden. So like a stove analogy, it's like, you can boil the water, put it on the back burner, put in the noodles, ha put in some spices and, the, and on the front burner, you're, you know, like uh, stirring the puree peas, you know what I mean? You, and it's a rotation when you're a chef and you're cooking. So it's like, you can get burnt out and things need to breathe and to live and have a life of their own. And we need to be non-attached to certain outcomes and circumstances. So it's like, a, I'll put it there in rotation 
not forgetting about it, but putting it over there to dismantle myself from it or else some people get obsessed and mm. like try, they're just trying to like squeeze something into something. And that's how you sometimes like burst the balloon and ruin mm. the gift. So when you let things breathe and it naturally like comes back to you, like I put it out there in the universe and it naturally circles around and comes back to me, then it's like oh, a fresh breath of air. It's like an honor. It's a gift. I mean, I hope to work with Nicholas Cage again, you know? Um, I really, really loved working on, um, someone brought, the, brought this up to me my friend from I value culture, Adam, he's in San Francisco. He's like, Oh my God, you were the lead in pink's music video. Who knew like her biggest song is sober. And her second biggest song is who knew from, from what I've been told it has over 150 million <laughs> views. And it's like, Oh, well, I don't even think about those things. I did the project and I kept on going and yeah. I was like, okay. And then I put it on my website. So I'm like, Oh, cause it kind of reminded me like, Oh yeah, I did that. But it's like to connect with pink and work with her and like to be hand selected for that role. And it was a two day shoot and Samuel bear who I honor and admire and I love him. And it was be now he's gone out to direct feature films. So I saw, I was at a, a, a stake in the road of him making new choices. So Samuel bear is and was like the go-to person for music videos. Mm, and I didn't guy. even know who, <laughs> Teen Spirit Nirvana. He directed it. Classic. The Cranberries. Zombie. Oh, brilliant. Zombie. Fantastic. Like, like I was energetically connected to him, not knowing it because I love that music growing up. And then I'm working with Samuel Bear. And the way he directed me was as being directed by a film director or a, mm. a, a TV director. So the way he treated me, and if you see the way it's shot, it looks cinematic like a mm. film. And then he went off to directing film. So it makes sense. But I felt like the way we connected, you know, and him treating me as the actor, as like I was in a film and mm. how, and the way he was, it was just so brilliant to be able to feel and experience that and then see his, growth and evolution going into feature film. So I hope he calls me and wants me in his near future projects. And I'm putting it out there into the ethers because that would be really magnificent. You know, he's a great director, I think. Brilliant stuff. Well, I'm sure he will. If you're listening, pick it up, pick up the phone. <laughs> Send it to him. Send it to <laughs> Samuel it. Bayer, B-A-Y-E-R. Be like, here you go. I had this actor on. She spoke so highly of you. Thought it thought I would share with you. Here's the time code. That's what people <laughs> like. They like the time code. Job so done. They don't have to sift through it. You're just like, here, start it at 32 minutes or whatever. <laughs> yeah. And they'll leave tune our, in. Katie, leave that with me. Sort that for you. No problem. Yeah, and then maybe he'll be on your show or something. <laughs> yeah, well, why not? No one's why unreachable, not? right? <laughs> exactly. Um, so if we dive back into your podcast now as well, then. So for people who aren't familiar, A, where can we find your podcast? And B, what can people expect from your podcast? I'm on all 28 platforms that you can go to. So if you go to chinakis.com and you can just click on podcast and you can click on any, I'm on all of them, Excellent. but it's she, it's, she's all over the place podcast. And, um, you know, I'm talking about, um, you know, she's all over the place. The world travels, anything that interests me, um, anything that interests me at all, photography, producing, women empowerment. My season four, I'm doing a women empowerment series. So I'm awesome. really, really excited about that because the divine femininity, you know, is so important to me. So I'm holding space not only for myself and to get more in doubt of divine femininity and mother earth and the planet and the environment, but to really hold space for other women out there to share their stories and, and hear their voices and learn from one another and, you know, create this collective consciousness. And there's already multitudes of those collective consciousness. So I'm creating a body of that to be connected with that, um, to hook up to that incubator of collective consciousness out there to empower that for all of humanity, for men and women and everything in between. Um, you know, we're only strong as our weakest link. So by empowering one another and sharing these stories, um, you know, it's, it's one of my goals, but I have an episode on misophonia. I have an episode on guilt and fear. I have musicians on Joey Paul or Joey Williams. He's in the blind boys of Alabama. He's the president. He's the only one that's not blind. I met him at the Grammys in 2005. Brilliant. He's been my friends ever since Alex Sokolo. He's the original writer from toy story, the animation toy story. Oh, wow. And then he 
and then he sold it to Disney. He's on season one. The <laughs> president, uh, Tom Lawless of the top five voiceover agency in the world, Vox. And I just found out the other day, Billie Eilish is with my voiceover agency. I like almost fell out of my chair. <laughs> That's incredible. So, so it's people in entertainment, but not only people in entertainment, it's people who are into the environment and, and, and entrepreneurs giving valuable information. Not only like I have some scientists on Tony Robbins partner in Austria strong about like bone health and what people our age and people who are younger and the bone health and what they're not doing in times of, and then their bone density is de depleting and they're getting osteoporinia and osteoporosis. Mm. So this is something you may want to share with your mom or someone you love or, you know, like preventative measures. And so I like to enrich and inspire and educate people and explore the unknown and take their collective consciousness and, you know, put it here in the 21st century for you, for me, and for people who want to tune in. So that's what she's all over the place is really about, you know, it's um, non-judgmental. It's, it's uh, not scary. <laughs> it's not scary. It's a clean show, um, you know, as a, you know, because I have a lot of teens who listen to my show and, you know, a lot of artists, um, a lot of, you know, entrepreneurs, yeah, who tune in. Excellent stuff. Well, you're definitely down with the inspiring part. Anyway, you've definitely got that, Neil. You're very inspiring, to say the very least. So, thank you. Fantastic. Well, no, I mean, it genuinely mean it. It's, it's brilliant. Just literally, you you are all over the place. You've done, <laughs> done everything, a bit of everything. You remind me a lot of me in many ways as well, right? If I want to do something, Everyone's saying to me, this came on, there's something wrong with you. You're crazy. You're not going to do that. What are you doing now? You're, you're already doing this. You're already a Harley Davidson enthusiast riding around all over the place, okay, with your brothers. Um, you were a hardcore MC, a happy hardcore MC many years ago. You're a singer in a band. Uh, you've dabbled in acting. Um, so you're podcasting now as well. You're a semi-professional wrestler. Uh, you're a rescue scuba diver. Uh, and then, so, you know, it's, I'm just lucky when I finish something, I decide to move on to the next thing. Do you know what I mean? And as well, you've... guess what? Well, next, next, you're going to be uh, a voiceover actor because I'm going to show you steps how you can do it because with your accent, it's so specific. And so those are very specific roles to empower yourself. And you already have the home set up and you can become a voiceover actor. I was actually looking at voiceover acting. I was talking to my my partner about it a few weeks ago as well, actually. So uh, yeah. yeah, that'd be fantastic. Oh. So what I need you to do, a call to action is uh, listen to Tom Lawless, listen to Alex Sokolo, listen to Sovis, S-O-V-A-S, uh -huh. listen to all those podcasts, um, get all, all the information, and then I can download and give you more factual information of who you can connect to and what you can align to and what you can do to make it happen. And the other thing I would say, like we talked about earlier, the people who are saying why or say just don't because that's your energy and you're wasting your time. The, the what you can say is why not and know not to bring those things up to those people again. It's a sign for you when they're saying why and trying to tell you why you shouldn't do it. Mm. It's it, Abraham Hicks, Esther Hicks, listen to her on YouTube, but she's either you're either going upstream or downstream, upstream or downstream. And you want to go upstream with all the things you're going into and all the things you're flowing with. You want to be upstream. So someone who's saying why and telling you not to do this or trying to tell you what to do. They're, they're building resistance for you to go downstream. Mm. It's taking more of your energy. It's depleting you. It's frustrating you. It's upsetting to have to explain why. You don't have to explain why to anyone, not even to yourself, because you probably don't know, but you, it's a feeling. You, don't have, you can't make logic sense out of evolution and the gift of the energy that is limitless for all of us. Brilliant. Uh, that's mm. awesome. In in fairness, my girlfriend, she's all over it. She is. She's like, oh, you want to do it? Just do it. Do it. Go on. Prove them all yep. wrong. Just crack on and do it. Yep. She says, I, I know you'll do it. Anyway, she's, uh, you know, so she's really supportive. Shout out, Amy. Uh, she's Shout she's out, great. Amy. Those are the people <laughs> we want to be around. Absolutely. People say, people say, oh, that's a crazy idea. I can't wait to see what you do Absolutely. with it. Yes. My partner, Nikki Scorpio, Um, he, he says, oh, this is why I love you so much. This is why I love you so much. <laughs> Anything he comes in and tells me, I'm like, go for it, go for it, go for it. I'm not going to do it for you. Like all the exactly. best on your journey. He wants to start something. He's like, do you want to be a board member? I'm like, I am so committed to my projects and what I'm doing. 
but as a board member, I'm honored. Thank you. And you can present, you know, a document or templates to me once a month, and I can review it for an hour or two and give you my strategic um, thoughts on it. And that's how I can be an asset for you as a board member, because he respects my communication. He respects my quality, my choices. And this is how I can fuel you and support you. I'm not going to do the legwork and call and do it for you. That's why I have assistance. Like I'm, I'm not 15 anymore. Like, <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like y'all can do those things, but this is how I can support you. And, and I can emotionally support you to by say yes. And that's what I like. But if it's a thing where it's like, it's a no, and they're asking me, they're asking me cause they're wanting my thought about it. And this is just my thought. I'll be like, that's not for me, you know, or based on my experience, this is what I can share, but do you, you know what I mean? It should never be an exact thing. You know, uh, I think the best friends, this girl, Di, who I hired in one of my web series, Trigger Flaw, she's amazing. One of the best things she could ever do was just listen. Mm. She just listened. She allowed me space just to get it all out. And she was just this divine feminine energy and held space for me just to listen. And then she didn't listen and say, oh, but do this or try this or do that. She didn't do any of that. And that was a really big aha moment for me. People don't want to be told what to do. Even when they're asking, they don't want to, they don't really want it. We already know inside. We just might be insecure about it. We may not know. We may just need to spend some time quieting our monkey mind and get quiet with ourselves and journal about it. But when we ask someone, it's not really because we don't know. We already know. Mm. Obviously you're inquiring about it because it's something you want to be doing. Well, that's it. If it's in you, it's in you, you know, and you and you've just got to take steps to follow it up. I guess you know. One step at a time. One Absolutely. step at a time. Find Small someone. goals to hit the big goal. I always do, you know. So big goal mm -hmm. there, little ladder to get to it. One step at yeah. a time. Bang on. Brilliant. Yeah. Bang uh, on. I like that. Bang on. <laughs> I'm gonna start saying that. I, yeah, I'll, do you, you can... start saying this? I'll give you. We'll exchange words. Let's do it. Okay, I'm gonna say bang on from now on. And um, what you can say is instead of um, when someone's saying something, I'm like 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000. You know, when people are like, oh, 100% or like 1,000 or 100% agree, I'll be like 1,000, like not 100, like 1,000 hands down, 1,000. 1,000. Yeah, I'm yeah. on it. It's there. Yeah. It's there yeah. we are. It's in black and white. 1,000. I'll bang use on. that. Definitely bang on. I'm going to use that 1,000. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, Katie, it's been absolutely awesome speaking with you. Thank you so much for coming on. Before we wrap up, is there anything we've missed? Any plugs, any shout outs, any acknowledgements, anything oh. at all you want to chuck in? I just have, I had a, it doesn't have to be, but I just had a fun moment of like um, 1,000 and banging on with artist Katie Chinakis as the title. Fantastic. <laughs> or, or Katie Chinakis. <laughs> 1,000 and banging on with, <laughs> I don't know, a lover, uh, some an artist or something. I don't know. That, that's kind of like 1,000 and banging on. That's wicked. 1,000 and banging Chinook on. What does that mean? Katie Chinook, that's 1,000 and banging on on the Cayman Show. Woohoo! There you go. Fantastic. Yeah. This stuff is right in itself, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> brilliant. Well, thank you yeah. so much for coming on. Good luck with everything. You're not going to need it. You're doing awesome things. Keep doing what you're doing. And hopefully we get to speak again soon sometime. Yeah, let's make it happen. We're friends now. Definitely. Fist bump. Bang, bang. 1,000. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> awesome. Katie Chinakas, everybody. Thank you so much. Woohoo! Woohoo!